Hey everyone, welcome into One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today I am doing another set guide and review, and it's a big one. It is for 2022 Tops Update Series. A lot of people are saying that this might be the best set of the year. We know it's got a lot of the big rookies, but what are the other key cards we're chasing? What are the key teams that we're going to be looking to buy into for breaks? And how good is the set really? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Tops Update Series Set Guide and Review. Just in time for the World Series, we have 2022 Tops Update Series dropping on Friday, and it is a fantastically hyped set. But how good is the set really? Well, we're going to find out using the exclusive One Cent Sensational Set Rating, which is the most in-depth set rating that you're going to find anywhere on the internet. How do we get to it? Well, I cover off on the set highlights first, give you that 10,000 foot view of what Tops Update Series is going to offer. Then we cover off on the different buying formats you can get it in, dig a little bit deeper, tell you what the key cards will be. We're going to tell you what all the parallels are, the inserts, the relics, and autos that we're going to be chasing. And then I even give you six teams that you can target in breaks. There's going to be a couple sleepers who I think the best is. And if you want to know how good all 30 teams are, well, I give you a break cheat sheet, which tells you that exact information. And that's what brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking, where we find out how good 2022 Tops Update Series really is. And we'll end the whole thing by telling you where it ranks among all the other sets that have been released so far in the 2022 baseball card collecting season. Before we begin, I have one more thing. Throw over to first and hit that like button. It's the best way that you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can catch all of them. And if you want to be the first one to see them, you got to hit that bell notification so you get notified as soon as the videos go live. And finally, check out my Patreon page. That's how you get into my breaks. That's how you can get PSA submissions at no additional charge. That's where you can get Discord community access and so much more. You can join for as little as $2 a month. And there's a link in the video description below. So if you want to check that out, I would appreciate it. So let's dig in. 2022 Tops Update Series. Here's the set highlights. The very first thing you need to know, it's the third and final release of the 2022 Tops flagship set. This year, we have a 330 card checklist, and it is in its 13th year of production. This year, we have a 16 color rainbow, same as we did in 2021, but you might find additional parallels that are in various retail formats. Because it is in retail, you're going to have it there, you're going to have it in hobby. This set is going to be pretty widely available. Again, the 1987 Tops design, as has been used all throughout 2022, is going to be used again heavily in this set, all throughout the inserts and autos and so much more. For Tops Update Series, the MLB 2022 All-Star Game also gets a big play here. So we get a bunch of All-Star cards from 2022, and we have a new insert set. It is called Paragons of the Postseason. Not quite sure what a Paragon is, but I'm sure it's a fantastic insert set. We have five auto relic sets and four auto sets that are going to be available in Tops Update Series this year. And then we have six straight relic sets that are also available. Silver packs, which are custom and all flagship, again, available in Tops Update Series in the hobby and jumbo formats. In the jumbo boxes, we also have oversized rookie reprint box loaders that are going to be available. And the most important thing to know, this set is going to feature a complete complement of all of the 2022 rookies that we've been looking for. So Julio Rodriguez, Bobby Witt Jr., Spencer Torkelson, CJ Abrams, and so many more. They're all going to be available, and you're also going to get some of the post-lockout team changes. So we'll finally see a card with Freddie Freeman on the Dodgers in the flagship set. So what are the different buying formats? We start with Hobby. First, we can get a Jumbo Box. A jumbo Box is going to give you 460 cards, 10 cards per pack, 4 to 6 cards per pack. 
The current cost on that is going to be $230 for an online price. So that gets you to a cost per card of 50 cents. You're guaranteed to get one auto, two relics, two silver packs, five gold foil parallels, which are exclusive to the jumbo box format, and that one oversized rookie reprint box loader. If you get a hobby box, that's going to have 24 packs per box, 14 cards per pack, 336 total cards, current online price going to be 115 bucks. So your cost per card comes down to 34 cents, but you're not guaranteed an auto. You get one auto or relic, you get one silver pack, and you get two rainbow foil parallels. But you can also find this in retail, so we'll start off there. You can get a retail box, 24 packs per box, 16 cards per pack, 384 total cards, and that's going to only be $85. Cost per card, 22 cents. Not guaranteed to get any autos or anything, but you are going to get 24 stars of MLB cards. That is an insert set that is exclusive to the retail format. You can also get the blaster box, 7 packs per box, 14 cards per pack, 98 total cards, going to cost you 25 bucks. So your cost per card creeps up to 26 cents, but you do get one commemorative batting helmet relic. That is a manufactured relic, by the way. Then you could also get the hanger box. That's going to have 67 cards per box. So 67 total cards, 15 bucks for a current price. Cost per card, only 16 cents. And you're guaranteed to get four different inserts. You can also get a fat pack, 36 cards in it. And the current price on those is going to be somewhere around seven bucks. So your cost per card comes down to 17 cents and you're guaranteed to get two retail inserts. One final thing to note, individual gravity feeds probably going to be available in retail locations and you might find additional formats like mega boxes, tins, blister packs, etc. But it just depends on the retail location. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing? Well, we start with the rookies, which is a big deal. First one. Spencer Torkelson, C.J. Abrams, Julio Rodriguez, Mackenzie Gore, Bobby Witt Jr., Royce Lewis, Hunter Green, Alec Thomas, M.J. Melendez, Bryson Stott, Seiya Suzuki, Jeremy Pena, Stephen Kwan. Now, that is just a few of them, a few of the bigger names. There is a ton more, but there's also all the parallels, autos, relics, and inserts. Obviously, what is so prevalent in a lot of the flagship sets. We have the SP image variation cards, always very collectible and popular. We have the 1987 Topps baseball inserts and relics and autos. Those are used throughout the set, as has been the case all throughout 2022 flagship. And then we also have those 2022 all-star game inserts, relics, and autos. Some big names in a lot of those checklists. So we're going to see all-star cards all throughout this set. Something that's a little bit different this year, and actually it was last year too, but the all-star cards used to be part of the base set, and now they are an insert set. Then we have that new insert set, the Paragons of the Postseason. They do have some auto formats available. And back once again, the ever-popular Topps Black Gold inserts and autos. The silver pack refractors and autos, those are going to be back again. Some of those autos and some of those parallels end up being very valuable on the secondary market. Then we have the baseball stars, autos, and dual autos, the standard autos that you're going to find all throughout Topps Update Series. And we have cut signatures. If you can find one, some of the names on there are awesome. There's even a Ty Cobb one this year. Going to be huge long odds to pull those, but if you can get one, fantastic my favorite patch the tops reverent patch autos some of the best that you're going to find anywhere in the hobby we also have the major league materials relics and autos most of you are probably familiar with what those look like and we also have the oversized rookie reprint box loaders and autos found in that jumbo format for our parallels here's what we got very similar to what was offered in top series one and series two we got a rainbow foil card, a gold foil found only in jumbo, the royal blue, which is found only in retail. Then we get to our numbered ones, the gold, the 2022. We got a few foil boards, green, orange, and red, each numbered 499, 299, and 199. The vintage stock numbered to 99, the independence day to 76, 
And then you get black to 71, which is only available in Hobby and Jumbo. You can see what the Corey Seager black is going to look like there on the right. Then you get the Father's Day and Mother's Day cards. Those are each numbered to 50. The Memorial Day camo to 75. And then you get the clear variations. They're numbered to 10, but they are not the 330 cards. There's only 100 subjects, and you can only find them in Hobby Boxes. And then finally, we have our one of ones. We got printing plates and a platinum one of one. So what are the inserts we're going to be looking for? Well, we'll start with the 1987 Topps Baseball. Everyone kind of knows what that looks like. There's going to be 50 cards in that subset with a blue, black, gold, red, platinum, and wood parallel breakdown. You can see what the blue looks like over there on the right with Max Scherzer. Then we have the 2022 MLB All-Star Game, 50 cards in that one, with the same parallel breakdown, Sands the Wood, one of one. We have the 1987 Topps Chrome Silver Pack cards. There's going to be 75 cards in that subset. The parallels are to be announced, and there's autos and everything, but keep in mind, because they're in the silver packs, you're only going to find those in Hobby and Jumbo. Then we have the base card image variations. To be announced on what those are, they're always kind of a surprise, but expect there to be around 30 or so image variations, maybe a few more, maybe a few less, and very much expect there to be some of those big rookies that everyone's going to be chasing out of this set. They will be all over in the image variations. Then we have the Diamond Greats die cuts carrying over from Top Series 1 and 2, 25 more cards in the subset with the same parallel breakdown that is in most of the inserts found in Topps Update Series. Generation Now comes back for its third installment, 30 cards in that subset. The parallel is going to be blue. They say there's 600 copies of those, black to 299, gold to 75, red to 10, and a platinum one of one. We have more inserts as well. We've got the oversized rookie reprint box loaders. Those are only found in the jumbo boxes, 25 cards in that subset. And the new one, the Paragons of the Postseason, 25 cards with the standard parallel breakdown. The Salute to the Mick, which is in its third installment, we get the final three cards in this subset. Very hard to pull, very nice cards if you can get them. The Sketch Cards return again for update series. The artists to be announced, they're all going to be one of one, and you can only find them in Hobby and Jumbo Packs. Stars of MLB, which are the retail-specific one, 30 cards in that subset. Surprisingly, the checklist did not show that there are parallels, but there were parallels in Series 1 and Series 2, so don't be surprised if you see some parallels here in Update Series. Then there is the Chrome variations of those. Those land 1 in 10 retail packs, again, 30 cards in the subset. And Tops Black Gold, 25 cards you can see what that looks like with the Shohei, a very popular insert that returned last year. So they bring it back for 2022. Then we come over to our relics. For our relics, we have the All-Star Jumbo Patch Relics. There's 50 cards in that set, but they're each number to five. So they're going to be a pretty tough pull. And there are a parallel gold one of one. Then you have the All-Star Stitches Relics. That's what you see over with the Mookie Bets on the right. 59 cards in the subset with the silver, red, and gold parallel breakdown. And the All-Star Stitches Dual Relics, which is going to give you two relics. 12 cards in that subset, and they're each numbered to 25. Then we even have an All-Star Stitches Triple Relics. Six cards in the set, each numbered to 25 as well. Then we have the Blaster Box Exclusive Commemorative Batting Helmet Relic. 50 cards in the set. There is no parallels on those, surprisingly. We have a few more relics. The Major League Material Relics, which you're going to find in a lot of these boxes. There's 36 cards in the subset. You got parallels of black, gold, red, platinum one of one. And the platinum one of one is only available in Hobby and Jumbo Packs. Then you have the Own the Game Relics. 80 cards in that subset. They're each one of ones. What it is, is it takes a letter off the name of a player's jersey. So if the name is Julio Rodriguez, you get the R in Rodriguez. They make a relic out of it, and they're only available in Hobby and Jumbo. So just know that some players, even though they're one of ones, they may have multiple cards because their name has more than one letter in it. 
Then we have the special event patch relic. 46 cards in that set, only available in Hobby and Jumbo. It is a manufactured relic with a black, gold, red, platinum breakdown. You can see what the autographed version of that looks like over on the right. And speaking of autographs, let's get into those. We start with our 1987 Topps Baseball Autos, 75 cards in the set with a parallel breakdown of black, gold, red, only available in Hobby, and platinum one of ones, which are only available in Hobby and Jumbo formats. You can see what the Wander Franco looks like there over on the right. Then we have the Baseball Stars Autos, 39 cards in that. A pretty standard auto set that has been released for the last few years with Tops. We have the Baseball Stars Dual Autos, 12 cards in that, numbered to five or less. And then we have 25 different cut signatures, which are all one of one, a very good checklist, and also a very, very long pull. The Diamond Greats Die Cuts Autos, going to be eight cards in that subset, each numbered to 10 or less. And then we have the Generation Now Autos, again, numbered to 10 or less, 23 cards in the set. Carrying on with some more autographs, we have the Oversized Rookie Reprint Box Loader Autos. So those box loaders, you can get autoed versions. They're each numbered to 10 or less. They're only available in Jumbo and only eight cards. So only 80 of those total. Then the Paragons of the Postseason, that new insert, there's the auto version of those. 16 cards numbered to 10 or less. We also have the Topps Black Gold Autos. 22 cards numbered to 10 or less. Then we carry on to the autographed relics. So these are going to be our patch autos. We've got the all-star autographed jumbo patches, 26 cards numbered to 10 or less with a red and platinum parallel breakdown. We also have the all-star stitches autos, 30 cards in the set, each number to 25 or less. You can see what it looks like with the Fernando Tatis over there on the right. Not sure that he was an all-star this year. All-star stitches dual autos. We've got 10 cards in that, each number to 25 or less with the red and platinum parallel breakdown. And the commemorative batting helmets, those can actually be autographed as well. 31 cards in the set, and you're only going to find them in blaster boxes. We have a few more autographed relics. The Major League Materials Autos, 27 cards in the set, each number to 50 or less, with a red to 25 and platinum one of one parallel rainbow. The Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is what that card is. Then we have the Special Event Patch Relic Autos, 29 cards in the set, each number to 10 or less, only available in Hobby and Jumbo. Finally, we have my favorite patch auto, the Topps Reverence Auto Patch. 43 cards in the set, each number to 10. They're only available in Hobby and Jumbo, and you can get parallels, a red to five and a platinum one of one. So with all that, we now know everything that's in it. We know all of our key cards. This is going to be an ultra popular break product. It's a flagship top set. So who should you be buying in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm going to give you six teams. We're going to start with what I think the best team is, and that is the Seattle Mariners. They have 13 base cards, two rookie cards, 17 inserts, five relics, 18 different autos. But really, there's only one thing you're chasing if you're buying the Seattle Mariners. They're probably going to be the most expensive team. You're chasing Julio Rodriguez. He's got eight different autos in the set that you can pull. If you get one, it is a boom. If you don't get one, the Seattle Mariners, they do have George Kirby in there with some autos, and they do have some other things that you can pull. But you're really chasing Julio Rodriguez. If you do not get Julio Rodriguez in a case break, it's going to be a letdown because you probably spent too much money. They are probably the best team, but they're a very risky team. So if you're risk averse, I would stay away from the Mariners or buy into random team breaks. If you're doing a pick your team, you're going to pony up some good cash for the Mariners. But if you hit that boom, it will pay off. If you do not, you're going to lose money. So a little bit of buyer beware when I say they're the best team. If you're looking for the most autos and your best chance at getting an auto, and I believe it's a very good team to get into, also going to be probably a top three most expensive team, go look at the Los Angeles Angels. They have 11 base cards, 
one rookie card, 18 inserts, 18 relics, and 35 different autos. And Trout and Shohei autos are all over the place. You can also get Reed Detmers, Nolan Ryan, and a few other smaller names, but the Trout autos are all over the place. Shohei Otani autos all over the place. So if you're looking for autos, those would be big autos to hit, and they've got plenty of them in the set. If you can get them in a pick your team, it's going to be expensive. If you get them in a random team break, hold them, hold them, hold them. Do not trade them away. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, you got to look at the Cleveland Guardians. They're actually tied with the Twins, but we'll cover off on the Guardians. They've got 14 base cards and five different rookies, 13 inserts, five relics, and nine autos. So not a ton of autos that you're going to be chasing here, but you do have Stephen Kwan, which is probably the chase for the Guardians. Jose Ramirez has an auto or two in there. Gabriel Arias is also in there. But the reality is, is even though they have a lot of rookies, they don't necessarily have a lot of autos. And some of those names aren't that big. So you can probably get this team on the cheap. If you're a Stephen Kwan fan, buy into him. It should be a fairly easy buy-in if you're buying into a pick your team break. I wouldn't recommend trading for him in a random team break unless you're chasing that Quan auto. It just, there's not a lot to offer there. But if you're a rookie card chaser, probably a pretty cheap buy-in for the Guardians. So maybe you want to check them out. If you're looking for a solid choice though, just go look at the Detroit Tigers. The Tigers, they got 15 base cards, four rookie cards, 18 inserts, seven relics, 19 autos. Four of those autos are going to be cut signatures. Some big names too. Spencer Torkelson, Miguel Cabrera in his final year. You've got Ty Cobb and Hank Greenberg cuts. Like I said, those are going to be really long pulls. But the big draw here anyways, probably going to be that Spencer Torkelson card. Because they don't have like a ton of autos, I don't see them being in the top five. Maybe they break the top five most expensive teams in a pick your team break. But I think the Tigers are going to be a pretty good buy on a pick your team break because people are a little bit down on Spencer Torkelson. Don't be. He's a really good player. He was really young and he was playing for a subpar Tigers team, not a team that made the playoffs like the Seattle Mariners. So keep that in mind. The guy's got a ton of career in front of him and he's still really young. Because the hobby is a little bit down on him right now, I believe that you can get them at a fairly good price in a pick your team break. Also might be a team that you can trade for if you don't get them in a random team break. So don't be afraid to pull the trigger on trying to get a trade for the Tigers. And if you get the Tigers in a random team break, I would probably hold on to them and go for a Spencer Torkelson chase. But now I'm going to give you two sleepers. The first one, the Minnesota Twins. As I mentioned earlier, they were tied with the Guardians for the most rookie cards. They have a lot more content, though. They've got 18 base cards, five rookie cards, 31 different inserts, 17 relics, and 23 different autos. Now, some of the autos that you're looking for, maybe not the biggest names, but there is Royce Lewis, who was a former first pick overall back in 2017. Joe Maurer's in here. Byron Buxton's in here. Dave Winfield has autos. There's some smaller rookie card autos that you can also chase in here. And my belief is that because of the amount of content that they have, 17 relics, 31 inserts, some of those cards might not hold the most value, but over the course of a case break, you might find that you're getting enough value in parallels and everything else. I believe the twins are going to return a fairly decent value especially being that there's a lot of rookie cards in that. If you can get them at the right price, maybe middle price range, I believe that you would probably make a pretty decent return on a pick your team investment. It's also a team that I would hold on to in a random team break, unless you can trade up and get one of those top tier teams. Might be tough to do. And it's also a team that if you don't get the twins, if you have one of those lower tier teams, Try and make a trade for the Twins because the content alone that they are offering makes them one of the cards and one of the teams that will continue to show up repeatedly throughout the course of a break. For my second sleeper, I'm going with the San Diego Padres. 16 base cards, 3 rookie cards, 23 inserts, 16 relics, and 32 different autos. They have the second most amount of autos in the set. 
right behind the Angels. Now, some people might say, well, how are they a sleeper? They've got C.J. Abrams. And I get it. He is one of the big rookie chases. But he is almost like below Spencer Torkelson on the hierarchy. And so he's not one of the top three. And so some people forget about him. The Padres probably still going to be one of the top five, six, or seven most expensive teams for a pick your team break. You might be able to find them at a pretty good price. And if you can, that's fantastic because their auto checklist is fantastic. CJ Abrams, Mackenzie Gore, Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado, Tony Gwen's got a cut signature in there. There is all sorts of different autos. Joe Musgrove's in there. And they have a decent amount of rookies at three, and they have a ton of content. If you can trade for them in a random team break, it'll be the steal of the break, without a doubt. I might even say, you know, trade some of the bigger teams that, like, if you get Atlanta, trade Atlanta for the Padres. Atlanta has a ton of content. They're also a very good team. But I don't know. I claim that the Padres have a very good lineup. C.J. Abrams isn't getting the love that I think he deserves in the hobby. Mackenzie Gore used to be one of the best prospect pitchers, and I believe he has a very bright future in the sport. And if he ends up panning out, you could get some really good value at not a very expensive price out of the San Diego Padres. So tell me what you think in the comments below, what you think about these teams, who you're chasing, what are the teams that you think should be sleepers what are the teams that you think I got wrong on here? I love to respond to most of the comments. So please comment below. Let me know what you think about it. But if you want to know how all 30 teams break down, well, I've got the break team cheat sheet. Here's how this is going to work. We've got three different tiers. The top tier, tier one, a middle tier, which basically says, hey, these teams aren't bad, but you're going to kind of hit and miss every once in a while if you're buying into a break. And then we have tier three, which is the bottom tier, which are teams that I would recommend to stay away from. And in this break team cheat sheet, what I found is we very much have like a haves and a have not situation here, which is a little bit different than what we've seen in a lot of sets in 2022. We're going to cover off on the top tier first. The Yankees, 31 different autos, very good. The Boston Red Sox, I could debate that they might be a second tier team, probably the weakest team in this top tier. The Twins are up there. Like I said, a very good sleeper team. San Diego in there as well. You've got the Cincinnati Reds. They've got Nick Lodolo, Hunter Green, some very good teams there as well. Of course, Kansas City with Bobby Witt Jr. We got to put them in the top tier. It's surprising we've got that many in the top tier. We don't normally have that many. But as you'll see in the second tier, we don't have as many that we normally have in the second tier. The Dodgers, not a bad team, but not a lot of autos. I've got the Cleveland Guardians in here. Stephen Kwan, I think, moves, uh, moves them up into the second tier. But just like I said, even though they have a lot of rookies, don't be expecting a lot of autos to come from the Cleveland Guardians. Houston, a ton of different relics and whatnot. The Pirates I have up here, they're probably the weakest team in the second tier. The Nationals have quite a bit of content. And I put the Tampa Bay Rays, even though there is Wander Franco autos, because we've seen so much Wander Franco and because he was injured this year, there's I think they're going to be a little bit overvalued. So a little bit of buyer beware with Tampa Bay right now. And the other teams, the New York Mets, Phillies, not quite enough content to put them in the top tier, but not bad teams. And then you'll notice in the bottom tier, we have a lot of teams in the bottom tier, which we don't normally have. But most of these teams in here, the Texas Rangers, not a good team at all. They have virtually no content. The Milwaukee Brewers only have one auto that you can pull out of the whole thing. And then we have, surprisingly, the San Francisco Giants and the Cubs are down here. The Rockies have been a terrible team all year in 2022, so we'll see what happens in 2023. But these are the teams that I would stay away from. So with all that being said, that brings us to our sensational set rating. Here's what that is. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it is the most in-depth rating system anywhere on the internet. What I do is I break 2022 Tops Update series down into 10 different categories, and each category is worth 1 to 10 points. Then we add up all of the points, and that's what gives us our final sensational set ranking score using the scale that you see below. 
Then we compared the 2022 set score with the past set scores for Topps Update Series to see if the set is getting better, to see if it's getting worse. And then we end it all by comparing it to all of the other sets that have been released in the 2022 season to see how it ranks up against all of the other sets this year. So let's dig right in. Here's our 10 categories. Our first one is going to be appeal. Appeal means how much does the hobby like it? And the reality is if you're a baseball card collector, Topps Update Series is a very, very popular set. Some iconic cards over the years have been pulled out of this set. It generally tends to be one of the more valuable flagship sets over Series 1 and Series 2. And a lot of people are interested in it. And this year specifically, it's going to have a lot of love because of a lot of those rookie names that are in the set. So I go ahead and give it a 9. The base set checklist. For the first time all season, we finally have all of the rookies we thought we would have way back in the summer months. The base set checklist is really, really good. I go ahead and give it a nine. For our auto checklist, I'm going to give it an eight, a very solid auto checklist. We've got autos all over from the big rookies. We have Hall of Fame autos. We have some fan favorite autos and some very cool different relics with autos on it and whatnot. Just a very great auto checklist, so I go ahead and give it an 8. For our inserts, parallels, variations, the variations this year for the image variations are going to be fantastic. In this set, when you think about the, some of the rookies that you're going to get out of there, but we also have that Paragons of the Postseason, some very cool all-star sets if you like the all-star game. Definitely an insert set that you would want to collect. And then we've got all sorts of different variations and parallels that we can get in the set as well. So I go ahead and give it a seven. Where the set drops off a little bit is going to be in the production run and pack odds. Because of the increased production runs that we have seen over the course of the last couple of years, the allure of update not being printed as much as series one is kind of worn off. It won't be as printed as much as Series 1 was, but on that same token, it's still going to be massively overprinted compared to where it was just a few years ago. So I give it a 3.5. For the card quality, I bumped this up to a 6. I've had flagship at 5 all year, but this year, Topps has done a decent job on quality control. Yes, there's been some uneven cards and, un and cut cards that are kind of weird. But overall, pack over pack, they've been really good. And I expect that to stay the same for update. For our historical value, this is the one flagship set that has the potential to hold a ton of value, even on the level of some Bowman baseball sets. I give it an eight. If you think about some of the cards that have come out of update, Ronald Acuna's rookie card, Juan Soto's rookie card, Mike Trout's rookie card. A lot of these cards have gone on to hold some very nice value. And I think that legacy and tradition is going to carry on in 2022. So we give it an eight. For our cost value, that is, if you buy a box, whether it be a blaster or a hobby, what's the return that you're going to get on your investment? I give it a 5.5. The box prices have come down. They're a little bit over 100 bucks for a hobby box, which is not bad. Still higher than it was a couple years ago. But with the amount of rookies and with the amount of autos that are going to carry some decent value, I think you're doing okay here. Not every box is going to return 100% value. Don't expect that. They should only return on average about 70%. But I think that 70%, it might actually hit that fairly frequently. So I give it a 5.5. For artistic value, that is, you know, how nice does the card look? I still am a big fan of the 2022 design. I'm going to be sad to see it go away. I think it's one of the better designs they've had in the last few years. Some of the relics, some of the autos, and some of those inserts that they've done with the die cuts, Generation Now, stuff like that, they all look really nice. So I go ahead and give it a seven. And then for our final category, collectability which is how fun is this to collect? I think this is going to be a really fun set to rip open. It's going to feel a lot like 2018 Tops Update when you had all those big rookies in that set where you were pulling Glaber Torres, Juan Soto, Shohei, uh, Ronald Acuna. I think we're going to get that same sort of vibe, so it should be very fun. 
It is a flagship set. Set collectors really like this set. So overall, if you're in the hobby and you like collecting cards, this is kind of a set that you can't pass up on too much because it is very fun. So I go ahead and give it an eight. So what we're going to do, we're going to add up all those scores and see where 2022 tops update ranks. And for this year, we have a sensational set rating score of 71. So it is a very good set, kind of in the middle of the road for a very good set. The only thing that's really hurting this set is going to be the production run. And I don't think there's much more you can nitpick about it. You got the checklist you want with all the rookies. You've got a nice auto checklist. You've got a nice card design. You've got image variations. What more do you want out of a set other than, hey, can you make the production run a little bit lower than it has been? We even have a lower price point than we've seen over the course of the last 12 to 18 months. So overall, I give it a 71. Might end up bubbling up to be the best set of the 2022 card collecting season. In 2021, Topps Update Series scored a 70. So it was a good set last year too. Maybe not quite as good as this year, but it did score a 70. So historically, it is a very good set. And in 2020, Topps Update Series scored a 67.5. If you remember, that was the pandemic season and a lot of those key rookies were missing out of that set. And it ended up being kind of a weaker set, felt a little hodgepodge. The 67.5, maybe hasn't even aged well. I might even, de if I was to review that set today, I would probably put it even lower, but we'll give it a pass because that was that weird pandemic season. So how does 2022 Tops Update Series rank amongst all the other sets in the 2022 card collecting season? Well, I have it tied for third out of 29 sets at a sensational set ranking score of 71. Now, Topps Chrome, I gave a 75, and that was before all of the fiasco happened. Now, I believe that Topps has fixed that fiasco, and I believe that score of 75, even with the silver pack nonsense and all of that, maybe you knocked that a little bit, but Topps Chrome and Topps Update Series, probably pretty equal. I still don't think it's quite as good as Bowman Baseball. But overall, I think it might actually in the long term end up being the best set of the 2022 card collecting season, unless we get some surprise coming down the stretch. So it's tied with Topps Museum, kind of a high end set there. Panini only has one set in the top 10 now. That is Panini Immaculate coming in at five. And even though we didn't do a full on review, Topps Archives rounds out the top 10 at a 64.5. Topps Archives, also a pretty good set if you haven't looked into that. Sorry I didn't get a review out for that. So with that, guys, I hope as you're out there in the wild and you're looking for Topps Update Series, you're able to find it, and when you do find it, that you rip some fire out of those packs. Be sure to comment below. Let me know what you think about Topps Update Series and throw over to first, hit that like button, subscribe. You know the drill on all of that. And until next time, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourselves. Have fun ripping 2022 Tops Update Series. We'll be back with another set guide and review soon. I appreciate you watching and take care.